as this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over Lunenburg Public Access. And I'm going to f start the meeting off by officially opening up the first of two public hearings for policy updates. And the first one we have listed is the irrigation meter policy. Carl, do you want me to start with something else while you figure out that present that what you're doing down there? Um, yeah, what I, what, I, what I wanted to do is have one slide. Do you have a slide on the change? Explain for anybody who might be out there on the irrigation meter what, policy. What we're no, what we're. If what our regulation is for the if I can interrupt the go ahead Pack has a copy of this the um the track document good if you want them to put that up and stuff. um I gave him a copy of this thing oh, okay. so at least for this piece okay um so they can put it on the screen you can just read it off here so it won't come on there but at least they can present it I think the problem is you don't have a big enough mouse <laughs> Hey, pick on my mouse. Hey. Mouse is supposed to be little. Do you want me to go into single meter policy? It's pretty short while you yeah, pull that up. Yeah, that's a really good idea. All right, so we'll idea. switch it. I'll just go right to the single meter policy. Incorporating single meter policy into sewer use regs article V11-3B. So on this, the uh, changes starts in <clears throat> the sewer user charges section B. Um, I believe we're adding this whole section, correct? This is an addition. Uh, it reads, uh, <clears throat> the addition reads, single meter requirement, except as provided herein, sewer accounts will only be recorded in the name of the record property owner, even if the property contains a condominium form of ownership, contains manufactured housing units, or the like. The commission will only read the official meter permitted and utilized for the water account of the property. The commission will not read any individual or submeters unless each and every one of those submeters serves as an individual dwelling unit, and those dwelling units are served by separate and individual water accounts. The record owner shall be held responsible for any and all payments for sewer services recorded on the individual meters, and therefore the property served by that meter as a whole will be subject to any service termination or other necessary actions for non-payment. Appointment or assessment of sewer service costs between individual, individual complexes, units, or owners served by the single meter is the responsibility of the rec record property owner. Any sub-metering is at the sole discretion of and is the responsibility of the re record property owner. Submeters will not be recognized or read by the commission. The commission may, in its discretion, upon written application after a public hearing, vary any of the requirements of this paragraph, provided the applicant demonstrates that the requirement imposes a unique and particular hardship, financial or otherwise, and that said variance will not substantially not be substantially detrimental to the purposes of these regulations. Uh, adding that B, it just moved section C, D, and E into section C, D. So we had to add uh, C, D, and E. So the last part of that regulation is the same. It's just now bullet point C, D, and E. So those are the only changes. We just added that uh, into section B and moved section B to C and the C to D and the D to E. The wording did not change in those sections, though. So that is the single meter policy change. And if you're ready, Carl. That was perfect. <laughs> Just came up. <laughs> Good timing. I thought you meant my reading. I was getting it. a little worried. I was going to move on to John there. Um, you're good. So we'll go ahead good. and uh, irrigation meter policy, Carl. Uh, meter policy. Adding policy into sewer use rex article yeah. V11-32D2, appendix K. Okay. Um, and if, if you ha they have my um, presentation there. There's just one um, uh, biograph that, that, that I'd like to uh, share. Just to explain to people why we're, we know what we're doing here. Uh, two years ago, um, the commission decided that the regulations are very important and that whenever one gets changed, uh, it should get uh, as much visibility and opportunity by the people of the community to, to participate because um, this is these are the regulations. And um, before that, the uh, a regulation could be changed just, you know, on any given night at a meeting, uh, assume it's on the agenda, of course, um, but regulations could get changed without a lot of uh, public awareness or input. So uh, at the 2016 town meeting, we had a warrant article that was passed unanimously where we would institute a process in the bylaw, which is important because this process being in the bylaw can't be changed without going back to town meeting. So any regulation changes, um, we came up with a process where we would notify, we would, once we agreed that there was a change that was desirable amongst the commission and voted um, to move forward, we would um, have two public hearings and we would 
uh, advertise in the paper those public hearings uh, five days in advance versus the normal two days uh, and that those two public hearings would be on on um, a televised night which is why we're here and why we will do this again um, the end of next month in November 27th thank you Barb um, so we will we will do this again on the 27th so um, if uh, if you want to join us on the 27th and provide some some media input because we will not vote on these changes until after we've had both public hearings so if you do want to participate make any inputs uh, we would encourage you to come to our our next televised meeting on the 27th um, we will relive this again um, so that that said um, one of the changes we've been working on for a while uh, is to the irrigation meter policy um, and um, I'm, I'm on slide five now for the, for the TV guys um, so what I want to make sure first is um, a lot of people don't know what the irrigation meters are um, so some some users in the community um, have irrigation meters um, what happens is uh, you know all our bills as you know are, are based on the water into the house um, but if people are using a lot of water for irrigating, uh, that water doesn't end up in the sewer collection system. So um, this is a policy that would allow them to add a separate meter um, to, their, uh, to their house, which would be only used for irrigation. And that meter would be used to offset the, uh, the water usage. So it's, a, it's, it's pretty important. Um, if you're going to do a lot of irrigating to um, to do this, otherwise you, you you know you pay sewer not only water but sewer bills for uh, for the watering. So um, this policy has been in place for a while, um, and and there are other similar situations, not just irrigation. Uh, there are pool fillings that could have fallen in the same category. We have a pool filling um, process that can um, that can be used, um, but the irrigation meters you know have been installed by the customers. At their expense, um, and as I say, um, they're used to monitor uh, how much water um, essentially goes into the house, but does not go into the sewer collection system. Um, the reason that we uh, that we're changing this is um, not to get rid of them or to try to convince more people to get irrigation meters, but of our roughly 900 sewer um, customers. Uh, only around 55 uh, of those customers have irrigation meters. So it's a pretty small population that uses this, uh, um, this opportunity. Um, the current policy does not specify exactly what meters are to be used. So there's a, a little bit of confusion and uncertainty there in terms of the meters. Um, since all of our, our meter water um, uh, readings for what goes into the house is um, comes from either Lemonster, Fitchburg, or the Lem Lunenburg Water District, wherever your water, your water and your water bill comes from. They supply those readings to us, so we're not in the business of reading meters. Unfortunately, um, the irrigation meters are special, and we do have to read those. So that causes some uh, some work and activity, um, not just during the um, the meter reading. We have to subcontract to get the meters read. So we pay someone to go out and read these 50-odd um, meters. Um, but there's also extra billing and extra issues that come when meters readings don't make sense or don't work. So there's, there's a, quite a bit of cost associated with supporting this, this program um, that currently is spread amongst all of the users. Um, and the, the commission felt that it was, it was more fair and more of a cost-based accounting that those costs not get spread among everybody who doesn't benefit from it, but uh, get, uh, get covered by the, by the people actually on the program. So what are we, we're proposing basically for um, four changes. One is that we would specify what meter is to be used so we can standardize the meters. Um, and this would hopefully reduce the overall cost for implementing this program. It would give us some other opportunities in terms of uh, reading the meters and collecting costs. So that it would be, um, but without having standardized meters, we really couldn't do that. Um, we, we need to make it sure in the policy, the policy right now is, is very light to, to, to say the least. Uh, it's not made clear that the customers are responsible um, for the meter. Um, and um, repairs of it, making sure that it's uh, inspe it, that it's up to speed, and they're responsible for making sure that the plumbing, um, when that meter is put in, is um, is approved by the plumbing inspector. Um, 
Tutu. Yeah, all the all um, uh, responsibility is, is on the homeowner. Um, and because we are specifying and standardizing and in order to improve the billing, we need to have a common meter. Part of this, pro this process will not be only to specify the meter, but will be to requ require that all irrigation meters are upgraded to, the, to, um, to be consistent with the new specification uh, by June of, of 2019. So by June of next year, um, all of the meters would have to um, be compatible with what's being specified right now. Um, to cover the costs for this program, um, the policy, the regulation change will be implementing a $25 fee um, if the meter is not um, working properly and we have to send someone, have to send someone out. Oh, it was 50. Was that 50? Uh, it's, it's, uh, the annual fee is 50, but the fee, if, you, if we have to send someone back out to read a meter, is, is, is 25. Uh, it's a little out of order, so I... <laughs> Sorry. Yep. No, it's all right. Um, that's the next point, Barb. Thank you. Um, the cost for administrating this program, um, other than special costs, like I just said, would be uh, $50 for each um, meter user. Uh, in order to simplify... Um, and the whole goal here is to reduce those costs so that um, even the people paying the cost directly, it's as little as possible uh, as we can manage. So um, to simplify the process uh, of even the billing for this um, $50 fee, part of the regulation is that it would automatically be deducted from the savings that's accredited to an account. So, um, this will save people a lot more than the $50 fee. So um, rather than having special bills and special invoices and all these things, the simplest thing is we will just deduct it from the, um, uh, from the savings. So there's a number of sections in the, in the, um, in the change that, um, that accomplish all of these things. In the installation requirements, the Section A of the um, uh, regulation, um, the key of that section is that a licensed plumber um, will um, pull a, a permit and install the meter, uh, and that this um, um, permit would be um, would be available and part of the um, application process for the meter. Am I stuck here? I am totally stuck. There it is. Okay, um, in the in the uh, in and that relates to the permitting. As I said, when there'll be a, a permit required, part of the permit submission will be that the owner shall provide a copy of the signed off plumbing permit to the sewer commission along with the irrigation meter application. Uh, once it's approved, then the sewer commission uh, will add this to the uh, irrigation meter reading process, uh, and this will all be timed um, um, to coincide closely with the date the water department takes their readings. Why does this keep happening? Um, section C is the billing and the credit. Uh, at the time of the billing, uh, and this is important, the irrigation reading is um, deduced from the water reading, uh, deducted from the water reading. Um, so it's transparent to the user. Um, the homeowner receives a reduced bill for the water, not entering um, the sewer pipes. The minimum charge applies at all times and at no time does the irrigation meter credit reduce the usage amount to below the minimum charge. The credit will be given twice a year at the time of the July and October billings, uh, which is when most of the irrigation water is used. So this should be, uh, it should work out fine. And again, having it only be twice a year is also, you know, saves the, um, saves the work. So we don't do it every quarter like we do now. Um, in section D, owner's responsibilities for the meter and proper operation. At all times, um, the property owner is responsible for the purchase, installation, proper operation, and accuracy of the approved meter. Um, so the full responsibility of that lies at the, uh, on the owner. If the meter readings are questioned by the sewer commission and are found to be in question, it is the property owner's responsibility to have it serviced until such time as the meter is confirmed to be in proper operation, operating condition, there will be no credits given. Um, so again, during the period of, um, until it's verified to be good, the, um, th there'll be no credits. If there is a problem with the meter and an additional visit 
reading is required, there will be a, char a charge of $25, which will be automatically deducted from the next irrigation meter credit. So again, no special bills or invoices. It'll just be deducted from the uh, savings. Um, meter requirements and fee. As of the effective date of this policy, which is November 30th, 2018, all new installations or replacement meters must comply with all the requirements set forth by the Sewer Commission and or be as specified in the irrigation meter policy. Um, in Section F, there will be an annual fee of $50 for each irrigation meter. This fee will be deducted each year from the irrigation credit. If no credits are taken or there are less than $50 in any year, the fee will be added to the final fiscal year quarterly um, sewerage bill. Uh, Section F is still TBD. Section F is where we will um, insert the um, uh, meter reading, uh, the, the meter that will be uh, selected in the specification on that meter. Um, this still needs to have a little discussion of the commission whether we'll make that part of the regulation or just refer to a separate uh, approved meter list. Um, but there will be a meter defined before this is implemented. Um, all existing meters must be upgraded to comply with this policy prior to June of 2019. Again, this is required because we can't implement um, um, the advantages in billing where we would not have to um, uh, read a meter. Um, we can use some more uh, modern techniques, hopefully, to do that. Yeah, this thing is pasty, yeah. um, and then just finally, uh, failure to comply with this policy will prevent uh, any credits from being applied to the property owner's quarterly sewer invoice. So that is the um, the policy, why why we're doing it, and um, what the impact will be to to the public. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Carl. <coughs> uh, next up, we're going to talk about the connection charge policy. I believe, John, you're going to read through that. Okay, this has to do with the uh, connection charge policy with the new inflow infiltration for I and I requirements. We're adding language into the sewer use regs, Article uh, Seven Four, Appendix G. Um, just to make sure everyone out there understands inflow and infiltration. Uh, the uh, infiltration is groundwater getting into the sewer structure through some type of de defect in the structure. And the inflow is inappropriate connections of many kinds. It could be storm uh, gutters, sump pumps, and uh, we're required to um, create a bank to deal with this. And we're just changing uh, the wording for clarification in section six. It now reads, in addition, a charge of $2 per gallon based on Title V flow criteria, and the new part is for inflow infiltration sewer bank. It's just clarifying what, what it's for. And there's still a real change there other than for clarification. And in addition, um, based on conversations with our one of our engineering consultants and the expectations of uh, DEP, we're adding the following wording to the article. Removal and or capacity fee. For all new connections to the municipal sewer where proposed flows exceed 15,000 gallons per day, the proponent must provide four gallons of INI or inflow infiltration for every gallon per day of wastewater flow to be discharged. If there are not sources of INI, which at the discretion of the commission are appropriate for removal at the time of the permit, a monetary fee may be required. The revenue generated from the capacity fee shall be used towards reduction of INI through studies to identify sources of INI or remediation of known sources of INI. This fee will be based on peak design flows and current treatment and transportation costs. Again, this is being added uh, at the suggestion of our engineering consultant, and it's because of, it's, it's expected by the DEP that it's in our regs. Thank you, sir. And the last one is the grease trap rules and regulations. 
thought originally it was going to be ruined by Jum, but I can take a crack at it. <clears throat> so this is just a change to uh, updating Appendix C, uh, referred to in Sewer Use Regs article III-5. It uh, has no update, so it's just the Appendix C of our grease trap rules and regulations that are up being updated. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read through them. Uh, in the definitions section, looks like section 3. Uh, about halfway through the page on the food service establishment, we're just adding at the end of the last sentence. Um, let's see. Add in for payments of all fees associated therewith, including but not limited to non-compliance fees. So basically this last part is going over fees for food service establishments. I can read the entire sentence so it's not too confusing. Um, at the end, it starts at both the owner of the premises where a grease trap is required and the owner or operator of the establishment or business conducted on the premises shall be jointly and this severely responsible for installing a grease trap acceptable to the commission for property servicing and maintaining the grease trap and for payments of all fees associated therewith including but not limited to non-compliance fees so that's the last sentence is the only change there and the general provisions section um, section a looks like we are changing the dates so the Permit fees will be due 30 days prior to the annual affected date of August 1st of each year. It used to be July 1st of each year, so now it's August 1st of each year. Further down, um, we added rates are based on compliance during the preceding permit year, including but not limited to property, completed logs and reports, and timely maintenance. What we removed from that section was rates will be tiered and will be assessed based on program compliance by each individual establishment during the preceding permit year based on the following guidelines and it goes through the following guidelines so we change that to rates are based on compliance during the preceding permit year including but not limited to property properly completed logs and reports and timely maintenance uh do we add section one completely no it was <clears> a, <throat> just a rewording um so i can just read how it's written now Yes, it uh, did not change the costs. Right? Yeah, the costs stay the same, so we just, to clarify, we changed some of the wording in Section 1 and 2. Uh, establishment with internal grease traps only. Establishments that were fully compliant, annual permit fee of $150, a reduction of 57%. Establishments with violations in compliance, annual permit fee of $350. Section 2, uh, same thing, we just cleared it up a little bit. Establishments with external grease in interceptors. Establishments that were fully compliant, annual permit fee of $450, a reduction of 31%. Establishments with violations and compliance, annual permit fee of $650. Uh, we also removed the tiers, as we re said before, that the tiered system is no longer in place. So we're Xing out uh, the formal sections A and B that goes through what those tiers are. Um, and then at the very end of this section here, we added no renewal application will be accepted or processed for any property with outstanding unpaid fees or penalties. So if you have grease traps in your establishment and you have outstanding unpaid fees or penalties, then no renewal application will be accepted or processed um, for your property or business. And that are the questions. changes. There's one more. Oh, there's one more? Yep. Um, section seven, violations and penalties. Um, little one, it was J uh, Jones. Oh, we just, right here? Yep. Okay, so we, we crossed out, um, assessed every two weeks, right in the middle there. I'll just read that. Uh, continue now, it's, it's, in, it's in violations and penalties. Um, Second paragraph in, continued noncompliance with any requirement of this regulation or the SCDA or failure to correct an existing violation may result in a noncompliance fee of $25 per day of violation retroactive to the start of the noncompliance. We are removing assessed every two weeks, so it's no longer assessed every two weeks. It's just until compliance is achieved. So we used to assess it every two weeks, but now it's not going to be assessed every two weeks. It's just going to be until compliance is achieved. Matt. Can I would just like to clarify um, the use of the word reduction. Um, I mean, the, the for establishment of internal grease traps only, the fee is $150. If, if, um, if there's a penalty during the year or you don't meet all the standards, the fee is $350. So that, that difference is 57%. It's not like a reduction in right. the actual cost. And the same is true with the um, external grease traps. Thank you, John. 
I would also like to point out just for the public's benefit that these these documents that we're reading from are on our website linked. If you go to the What's New tab, um, you can also see these. So if you have other questions. Great. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this hearing is to be continued until November 27, 2018, when the second hearing is to occur. It will be here. It will be televised. And we'll go through these changes one more time. And maybe people will come and give us some feedback. Now we're just going to go ahead and jump into the uh, regular meeting. Yeah, just, Mr. Chairman, just um, one one comment on that. I'm, I'm glad John, you know, brought up and clarified that that point. Um, we may want to consider see where we are next month when we get if, if and when we get any feedback, but we may want to con consider revisiting putting that percentage in because it's a it, it can be confusing yeah, and I, I don't I don't, I don't, don't need it. I yeah, don't know that it adds anything. It doesn't really add any value to it. It's just kind of might confuse people thinking right. they get so just so throw that out yeah we can bring it up sure for vote. no it's not that's the whole point of this right yep okay so just jumping into the agenda here we have any announcements Barbara do you no anybody no. public comment from anybody up here in the public no okay current business special town meeting 11 13 18 and sewer meeting date change I sent out what our we have one warrant article that will be at the special town meeting regarding the transfer um, for the res reserve capacity stabilization fund. Right. So that just transfers our money into a different account so we can hold on to it. Hold on to it. Yeah. Where the other meeting it was so we can use it, right? This, 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 this goes from. This is this holds it in case because similar to the the I and I the four to one. If there's work that needs to be, oh no, this is never mind. Um, reserve capacity is for if Fitchburg or Lemonster were to charge us because we have added an overage of accounts or flow, um, they can always come back and charge us more. So it's just so if we're around. pooling those funds um, as we go for any new accounts that have come on board to, uh, connected to the sewer since the original as betterment was assessed. Um, everybody that is assessed a privilege fee is now assessed the reserve capacity fee because it is additional flow not taken into account with the original IMAs. So okay. it's a stabilization fund to protect those mm -hmm. monies. Okay. Yeah, may maybe uh, Mr. Chairman, if you, uh, just in case there is anyone out there. Um, this this is something that has been done every year. It's normally, we, we had historically done it at the town, at the main town meeting, but at that time, it, it was very confusing because the number, the, the dollars weren't exactly known. The year wasn't over and we were still collecting funds. So this this was the suggestion of our, um, of, of our, our financial manager to um, just do it uh, after the year closes and the numbers are, are exact. Um, and the other thing is that it's um, we're very close to going to be starting to use that because we're when the Fitchburg um, payments are due, then we will start taking this out. I mean, it's close to <laughs> which whether we're going to put it in or take it out at this mm -hmm. at this special meeting. But um, uh, this this money will be um, is already committed, um, quite frankly. And as soon as we start getting the bills from Fitchburg for our, our recent IMA and capacity, then. Um, We'll be pulling that back out and paying for <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So it just protects it. And along with that, because of special town meeting being on the 13th, that would normally be a sewer commission meeting night. So just so everyone knows, we are moving it up a week and meeting on the 6th of November instead of the 13th. Okay. <clears throat> Inflow infiltration uh, evaluation RFP. Um, Carl's proposed changes to the scope. There's a handout. Yeah, well, she gets uh, just uh, you know as a result of our our meeting with the um, potential um, suppliers that, that came in. Uh, I tried to collect what was you know some of the discussion and some of the key points and just take another cut at this so we can keep it moving um, towards actually sending out for a quote. It on. What other things? I, I would say that you know there, it's pretty extensive because we had quite a conversation and quite a few points got brought up. I, I was not expecting and wouldn't even wouldn't suggest necessarily that we 
um, would, would finalize this tonight, although I'm very anxious to get this going because this is going to take, I don't know, at least six months, I would say, before we would get any results. Um, and, um, and then we need to decide what to do and go do it. So, you know, it is, it is kind of a timely activity. It is, uh, I agree. But I feel a little odd not uh, doing it with just us three. Right. Yeah, I, and it, 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 I think we. I, I don't know. It's worth even going through tonight. No, I don't. I don't want to go through it tonight. I think yeah. it's best to be have the handout. We read it. We come back on the sixth with, you know, hopefully, um, Bill and Ryan will be here. We can all kind of discuss our opinions then, mm -hmm. rather than vote on now. It's only a week. Right. So yeah, it, that, that's the good news. We have it's one week. And can we get copies of this to Joan and Ryan? I think you said. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Send them all. I don't know. Yeah, it's now public. It's in the public. But I, I, is this where we should talk about that? Yep. Barb. Yep. Um, I had um, last week in the office hours with council, I had asked council because of this and, and we have a, a couple other projects we're trying to move forward, maintenance plan and things. Um, and it's, it's very frustrating that the, the pace of uh, the municipal way. So I'd asked council if we have things like this, and I use this as an example, um, where we've, we've, we had a draft, we had meetings with the suppliers, is now an update. Is there any way without violating open meeting law to get this to the commissioners in advance of the meeting so that we could have come into this meeting with everybody having read it, digested it, poked holes in it, and have a discussion and move forward? And so uh, the answer was no? It, no, the answer was yes. Oh, okay. The answer was yes. And his recommendation was that if we put it on the website, oh, yeah, if and it is the in the public the domain, domain and it's now public information and it's not being done without the public having access to it. Um, and I, I, information I, think it's, I think it's great because it, it, it really would help us out. You know, you can't have any discussion on it. You know, you can't. No, you, you but can, you can look at it. You can look at it. You can bring it to the table. You can do your homework and you can, you know, instead of taking a month for every iteration, you could hopefully take in two weeks for every iteration. Right, like we should have an answer next next week. We'll discuss. Yeah, here, here we're fortunate that it's one week later, but normally it would be anywhere from two to three weeks. Election day too, the sixth. Yes, it is. So, so I, vote first. Vote first. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, the sixth is the. Oh, oh, I'm off yeah. topic. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, if only the and, chair um, would reel you in. <laughs> you should get a better one. <laughs> can I put? Barb. Are you set? Um, well, I, can I put in? I'd, I'd like to. What happened? I'd, uh, what happened? Just and then I had subsequently talked with council, and oh. he had he had said this is a way of going around OML, um, you know, violating I, OML I, I, by putting it on the website, but um, that normally it's a practice, it's an accepted practice of the commission, and since this was the first time, I had sent it to you. I don't know if you saw it, um, but I had sent it. Um, to Joe to ask if it was okay, didn't hear back, and since it hadn't been an accepted practice to put a draft document that no one else had seen on the website, I just thought it needed to come to the commission to decide that's if that fine. is something mm -hmm. we want to do. <coughs> that's fine. I, I, I didn't. I was on vacation all last week, so I didn't. I have a, a whole string of emails. Yeah, Disney and golfing. I have a whole string of emails I haven't really gone to yet. Um, <coughs> I don't see a problem with it if it's <coughs> if council recommends it and says it's okay. I mean. Uh, John, do you have a strong opinion either way on it? I, I, I think it's a way of <clears throat> speeding things up. But to Barbara's point, um, if we are going to be doing that, I would like the sewer commission to come to a consensus that that's what we're going to be doing in the future. Yeah, so when we table that discussion, maybe we can put it on our agenda and get everyone's opinion on that too. Sure but it, it definitely would be a way of speeding some things up. Right. I'd just like to get an agreement from the full commission. I agree. And I'll, I mean, that we've heard many times, that mean was not to make things more efficient. Right. <laughs> so if we can find a way to make it more efficient and still be compliant, right. that'd be a good goal to reach. So, I mean, at least with this one, we all have a copy or we will once Joan and, and Ryan get there, so. Yeah. Maybe we won't email about it. We'll just bring it. We'll have a discussion on the 6th. Thanks for putting this together. Okay. And yeah. Um, I'm, you're welcome. I, I, I respect John's opinion and, and yours. Um, I also, I also find it frustrating. We have a, this is a sewer commission meeting. We are a majority of the sewer commission. We should be able to do things that improve things and move them forward without, 
you know, having months of discussion on every little item. I mean, next meeting we may have only three people again. Um, so at, at some point we just got to do something. I mean, we're a board. We're a majority of the board. Yeah, but this is the first time it's been brought to the meeting, so it's not like... I mean, this is the first yeah. time this website thing, so this isn't like the third time we've had this but meeting. It, but, it's, but it's pretty no-brainer that when, the, when council mm -hmm. recommends that this is an approach we can use. Um, I, I just want to express my frustration that it is so hard to move things along. <clears throat> it can be, yeah. I mean, and we're we're our own enemies sometimes. You know, it's it's not it's not uh, anything else. But I'll be quiet. I just okay. We're so afraid. Afraid of? I don't know what. I mean, I'm not afraid of of anything. I don't think you should put your opinion on me that I'm afraid of anything. No, we're I'm not. It is. That's more frustrating than this. So I <laughs> think we just need to take a step back. It's one mm -hmm. week. I think we'll be okay. I mean, it's it's important to get. I understand we're a majority here, but we're not. It's important to get the opinions of everybody. It's not like when we take a vote on it tonight that <coughs> unless that you're proposing, we take a vote that this is how we should do things going forward. Not anymore. Okay. Uh, so that's the discussion on posting draft changes to website, correct? Yes. All right, maintenance plan. Should it be called a capital plan? Maintenance already being done by small water. Yeah, Heather, um, it did, Carl had sent me uh, the uh, recommended, it was uh, like a short two line maintenance request, maintenance plan request, um, and asked that I just run it by Heather. And I just received Heather's response a couple of days ago, and I think I sent it all out to everybody. And in it, um, she had more more suggestions about the format and included a sample from a RFQ she had been involved with in Barrie. Um, and also she just mentions that the, the wording of maintenance plan may be misleading because, and Jack had said the same thing um, when I had talked to him earlier, um, that maintenance is really done by small water and that this if we're looking at what we want to do long range, that it may be better to be termed a capital plan. So Heather included that in her response. So, but is it a capital plan? Yeah, no. If I can, if I can address that. I mean, if you go on on the website, a maintenance plan and a management plan. But a maintenance plan is very standard in the in the industry, water and sewer. Um, small water has a very a small, um, I wouldn't call it small, a part of our system that they operate. They don't have a maintenance plan either. <laughs> We've talked to them about it, and they have some. Um, uh, the closest we get to a, a maintenance plan, um, and I think is, is, is a section that could be put into a maintenance plan, is on our uh, generators. We have a very specific maintenance plan on the generators. We don't have a maintenance plan on anything else. Um, you know, it's more than just the pump stations. Maintenance plans include... Um, you know what you should be doing in general for the whole system when how often should you be inspecting your manholes what's this what's the schedule oh, you have to draw it once the manufacturer has scheduled intervals of exactly. main, maintaining certain exactly. aspects of it exactly. we don't have that right and 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 is and you know our pipes you know how often should you um, should you jet them you know we, we do jet them the good news is we're doing maintenance but we're doing the the jetting of the, of the pipes um, we do fairly re regularly, but sometimes we even miss that. Um, we don't have a plan of which pipes we're going to um, do in a particular year. Other towns, you know, if you if you have um, the other biggest thing that's in a maintenance plan that that we have haven't got at all, which is embarrassing, is we have no record of maintenance. We don't have any. And a maintenance plan would tell you which things you maintain records of and what you do with them. And some of the records would tell you, you know, you should be jetting this pipe every three years and that one every two years based on history. With no history, you have no way of building a plan and maintaining our system properly. Do we not have history on that stuff? Or when the last time things were jetted or anything like that? The, the, the answer I get, yeah, yes, we, we, we do. You know where it is. All you have to do is go look at, go dig up all the invoices from all the prior years and you can find out. That's not documentation. It's also something that Jack maintains and he has his I mean I, I, I feel like he's stated clearly which pipes he wants jetted and when he has he he has it I mean he knows when the pipes and where he the, can't give it to us no, it's not written. it's not written so. so he doesn't have it 
it doesn't exist. If Jack retires tomorrow, we got nothing. Well, we don't even know what I we know did where we're two weeks ago. Yeah, we can go through every file every year. And right. No, but I know anymore. which pipes are to be jetted every year, and then but, we always add an extra. But, but that's the point of a maintenance plan. That right. it may not be that we may not be jetting all the pipes we need to jet. Okay. So, a maintenance plan is a very comprehensive thing, and without it, we're not running a good business. So we're gonna we're gonna leave it as the maintenance plan. We're not gonna change it to the capital plan. I find a capital plan is just what you need to buy. And yeah, I think capital plan it might list your capital. But the the other um, the other thing was uh, was was Heather's um, response, which is um, which is great. Um, if if we were looking for a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar open-ended engineering contract, which is what the example she gave us was, then I'd say, yeah, <laughs> but we're not. We're looking for a document that's standard in the industry. Uh, and we, we know who we want to have quote it. Um, they either know or have access to what our system is and create and can create a document. Um, some of the things in there are good. You know, I mean, you, if you want to put in some of those things fine, but it's it's just way overkill for what we're talking about here. Yeah, we see a very basic rundown of what we need to do yeah. as far as keeping everything maintained. Right. So is, has that been distributed, the, what I gave you, Barb? It was in a part of that Heather's email that I did send out. Okay. So that... It's in there. So that draft, which you know, we said was going to be two lines, I think right. it's a lot more now that I've looked at it. <laughs> but, uh, it, but it's a very short thing. It'd be, it, if we could get that on the next agenda for people to review that, and then we can decide how did, what, did what it, we need to put in it to did go, everybody get that? go out yes. the proposal. Yeah, everybody has it, right? But so. it's it's buried. It's after Heather's, so I will send it out as a clean. Yeah, let's yeah, send it out as a clean thing. Is so it we can talk about. as an attachment to her? It was part of the same email because Carl just sent it as an, an email and okay. asked for me to run it by Heather, and I so I forwarded an right. email. Somehow to I, I I missed that. So if you. Nope. Yeah, I think you send it out to everybody. <coughs> Good. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, is that all for maintenance plan? I see confirmed nine vendors yeah. to receive. I guess if we're going to talk about it next week. We'll talk about it next week. And these nine vendors that you have listed here are the people that we're going to send that maintenance plan out to and say, quote this. And I just want to confirm nine because we've always, we kept talking about seven. Um, but then we added on-site engineering during, during that third-party review conversation, okay. which was a recommendation. And then... Heather's now put forward Tata and Howard. Um, so I, I also want to just have that. Does Heather have on. history with Tata and Howard? Yes. That, 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 that's obviously positive, so that's yeah. why she put forward. That's okay. Why she oh, we appreciate that. So. It's good. So maybe next week we can confirm yeah, who great. to send it out to. Yeah, I have no problem sending it to nine people if we want to. Uh, privilege fee assessment 654 Mass Ave. Yeah. I think we just need you to read it out so we can vote to uh, yeah. assess it. This is the property across from Public Safety. They had been a, it had been a multi-unit apartment building, so it had already been assessed for one and a half betterments. They've now put in um, three full condos. I don't have the bedroom count, but each one qualified as a, dwell, a dwelling unit. So they've already been assessed one and a half. We're assessing them another one and a half, so it's for 17. 320, 720 for 654 Mass Ave. So we don't need bedroom counts to assess this part? No. Um, condos uh, are considered a dwelling unit, and each dwelling unit is yeah. um, eligible for a privilege fee. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I just have a vote to assess? If I don't, if you don't mind. Ah, uh, yeah. So, can okay, someone put a motion uh, forward to uh, assess the privilege fee uh, for 654 Mass Ave, and then in that motion include that amount? Yeah. So I, I move we assess a privilege fee to 654 Mass Ave in the amount of seventeen thousand three hundred twenty-seven dollars and twenty cents. Second. All right, any further discussion? Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That's all. So I'll give that back to Barb. There you go. Uh, minutes. 10-9. <clears throat> uh, get a chance to look at them? Um, I did. I didn't any changes? Have no issues. No? John, any changes? Uh, no, no issues. I'll take a motion to approve the uh, minutes of uh, the 10 18 meeting. I make a motion we approve the minutes for the 10-9-18 Commission meeting. Great. I'll uh, second. 
Okay. Any further discussion? All good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's everybody. Uh, member agenda it points for future meetings. We already discussed these uh, proposed changes to the INI. They review the scope here, the maintenance plan, um, the posting of draft changes to the website. So all that will still be basically this entire bullet point will be there. Um, anybody else have anything other than the normal, normal stuff that we've um, kind of already I been trickling in there? I know we have a lot of agenda items already lined up for the next few meetings of the sixth i think we have a pretty full agenda already so there's no guarantee the 27th is going to be our second public hearing but we can still can we still squeeze stuff in there i think we were like for the sixth yeah, uh for the for the tw how is the sixth looking it's getting full especially now that we just added right well either way anybody have inputs i i printed out and left it in the printer I, I had sent you an email which doesn't count um, I think it's mostly the, the same things that are already on the list um, yeah I saw clearly it. these contract things that we need to to, to get out yep um, the manhole thing. yeah I'd like to um, um, that you've been on vacation and um, with some other issues I'd like to I'd like to suggest that we have a general we get back onto the agenda the um, business manager updates um, sure. There's, there's stuff going on, you know, that's supposed to be going on anyway, um, and I think we need to, um, you know, track them. Yeah, but we can throw those back on there, and whatever you have, we'll we'll go through them. Mm -hmm. Same spot as usual, just kind of throwing it at the end there. Nothing other than what's been discussed. All right. I think we've got a pretty full. We do. We got a lot going on, which is good. Public comment? Good, everybody? Yep. Cool. All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>